Okay. And let's try to get that over. Hello. We'll get started in a minute here. Just want to let some people join. Hey, AJ. I am doing fine. Oh, it looks like lots of people coming in. Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay. Well, this is going to be a needle play demonstration um, or temporary play piercings. Uh, you can call it whatever you like. Um, let me. Uh, Hey there. Hi, John. Um, so anyways, um, play piercings. Um, I was introduced to um, doing play piercings probably, I don't know, 20 some odd years ago um, by a, another female dame who um, was doing it at the time, and at that point in time, she was the only person I'd ever seen um, using uh, needles as uh, play piercings. So I picked it up from her, and uh, ever since I've been doing it, I know lots and lots of people do it, and there's lots of variations on how to do piercings and lots of different extremes. Um, but this is probably the simplest form of using piercings in a bondage discipline kind of uh, scene. So, um, to get started here, what's this? Need a new sub, haha. -ha. Yeah, I would really like that, John. Come on over. I need a sub because I'm actually playing sub today. And my Tom is going to uh, do this for me, which I taught him how to do this, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. So anyways, um, so let's get started. So what I want to do is talk about all the stuff that is involved in this in the first place, um, all this stuff you need. Um, first off, um, we're just using simple towel for protection right here. But if you're doing a scene in public, you definitely want to use... Um, maybe a drop cloth or plastic that is uh, big enough to cover the area that any blood may splatter in. Usually there's no blood involved in this, but occasionally you may get a drop or two and just for the safety of all concerned, um, you just need to protect. So um, some of the simple obvious things are gloves, must have gloves. Um, whoever is sticking you with uh, the needles has to be protected. Obviously, we don't want to transfer any diseases. The next thing are the alcohol prep pads, which you can get at any drugstore. And these are because you need to clean before you start, just like if you're doing blood tests. Everybody should be familiar with this. And also for the when we pull the needles out later, I'll explain why we use them. Um, cotton balls, of course, and tape, just in case you do actually get a bleeder, similar to when you get a blood test, you know, pull a little cotton on with tape so it stops. And um, really, that's all you need other than needles. And these are... Um, 25 gauge, one and a half inch uh, length needles. Uh, 25 gauge being relatively thin. Um, this is um, more or less painless, um, depending on the area that you pierce. So um, how to get these, you can go online and get these if you want, but usually the people online selling these will charge you a fortune. Um, whereas if you just go to your doctor and you're a little bit honest, they will usually just give you a prescription and you can pick up a box for, I don't know, seven to ten dollars for a hundred. So, um, these are the actual needles. They're always sealed individually. And we're gonna maybe use, I don't know, eight to ten. So, um, 
I think we are ready to start. So, go ahead. Let's start. <laughs> Typically what we're doing is this, these are all subcutaneous uh, piercings, which means that um, we're not going any, into any kind of um, muscle tissue at all. This is just skin, so he's going to go ahead and stick it through. And I'll show you close up of these, but um, I'm just trying to simplify this for him. He uh, started out as an actual needle phobe. Go ahead. Just stick it on through. There we go, and so that's a little too long. We'll do a quick adjustment there. So as you can see, there is now a needle in my arm, and that's still a little long, so we'll pull it out and stick it back through. So typically, it's nice to have at least a quarter inch or so sticking out on the pointy side, and you do need to be careful. You don't want to be running around with these on and accidentally stabbing people because this would be really bad. How is this pleasurable? Well, the way it's pleasurable is this is actually um, an endorphin high uh, for some people, not necessarily for everybody. I, I just got a little bit because I adjusted, so I'd like to clean up a drop of blood here. Okay. All right, so um, what we're going to show you here is um, the way I've used this in the past is typically I'll just do random needles. Go ahead. And um, it can be anywhere in the body. You sort of, sort of take your sub and put him on his knees, let him sit back a little bit, and um, put in a piercing and then attach a string like you see we're doing now and once the string is on what you do is then you can attach like a fishing weight and this then becomes a form of actual bondage if you do enough of these needles and I've done up to 64 needles at a time in a person so once you get the string on and you can attach a weight this is fine you can see that now, up close here, if I pull on it, try to get a good angle so you can really see, it, it pulls more or less evenly in that way. Um, what will happen is, is if you do enough of these with a large enough weights on each one, the person becomes pretty much stuck. It's like the same thing as putting them in cuffs and, or hanging them on a cross or whatever you do. So. This is a, a form of bondage, but we're not gonna do that today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, a simple lacing. So why don't you go ahead and get rid of that. Cool. All right, so we're just gonna stick in a row of needles. If you have any questions, uh, ask away. If you can, try to get the same angle. Thank you. Excellent. Good deal. <clears throat> and this is really actually not really painful at all. I'm pretty sure most adults have at least had one blood test in your life and uh, I don't know if you find that painful then you probably wouldn't like this but I get blood tests like every week so this bothers me absolutely not at all and the endorphin high is actually quite euphoric it's sort of like uh, uh, a runner you know, when they do marathons, they supposedly say that uh, when they're all said and done, they, uh, they get high from it, basically. What about needles? Sorry, it's hard to actually read this chat in this um, angle that we're at. There you go. 
So as you can see, someone has a question. Go ahead and ask your question. I will watch. No question? All right. It's kind of like art. Exactly. Um, in fact, um, if you look on FetLife, um, they do have a group called Artistic Needle Play, uh, of which I have, of course, joined. And I'm, I'm going to show you um, some of the work of a particular person on there that I've become acquainted with. Okay, well, this is good enough. I think what we should do is go ahead and lace it at this point. This is a, a pretty good example. And um, let's see if I can get a better angle on this. You can sort of see that if I pull on these, you can, you can actually tug really hard on the skin. You don't have to actually really worry about tearing. You would have to pull really, really hard. Um, there are more serious kinds of piercings that people can do. Um, including hanging yourself from your back. There are people that will do these large hooks, put them in your back, and then you can swing, which is very odd, but fascinating. Okay, so now we're just gonna lace it up, and, um, and that will be sort of the finished product. And then we'll show you how you take them out safely as well. Do you always need those type of needles or are there different ones? Yeah, this, the syringe needles come in a huge number of varieties of lengths and gauge. These are 25 gauge, one and a half inch length needles. Um, the gauge, uh, the higher the number, the thinner the needle. Um, and you can get needles that are like 18 gauge, which are pretty thick. And I believe they go as high as 28 gauge or 30 gauge. Um, so they would be very thin. They bend pretty easily. And inch and half seems about uh, appropriate. Uh, inch and half needles are typically used for intramuscular injections, um, but used this way. Oh. Finger. Need a finger? Yeah. <laughs> so, as you can see, this ends up being quite nice. You're going to have to pull that knot real tight. Go ahead, pull it tight. There you go. Crazy question, does this mean piercing meant for pain, pleasure, or both? Actually, both. Um, pain in that if you put these in certain parts of your body, they can cause quite a lot of pain, especially if you're doing like your nipples. Um, your breasts are certainly more sensitive than doing your arms or your back or your legs. Um, so you can find very sensitive areas. Um, I've seen pictures of guys that do their faces. So they'll put like 16 different needles in their faces. Um, and so, and obviously if you put a weight on and you tug at it, you do feel it. And um, the more tugging, the more your endorphins go. So um, that's pretty much it. And um, here, let me show you a picture. This is from a person on FetLife. Try to get that in good. As you can see, you can get extremely artistic with your lacings. So this is from uh, the Brunette X on FetLife. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? She does amazing work. So I just thought I have to show you this because I wanted you to see that it can be beautiful as well as
painfully effective. <laughs> I don't get any, what? Don't get any ideas for who? <laughs> this is not for me, but I'm in awe. Yeah, it is a little different. It is not painful. It, it does look drastic, but really, once they're in like they are now, it is just purely nice. It really is nice. It's quite comfortable. There's really no pain. Um, and you do get a, a bit of a euphoric high from it. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and cut this off. And I'm going to show you how you remove these things. little snip. And occasionally when you're doing this, um, you will, you know, you'll hit a bang, you'll get a little bleeding. Um, but that's why uh, you either have gauze pads or cotton balls and some tape. And um, the end result, when you're done, you may have little dots on your arm for a day or two. But there is no scarring involved. And it goes away really quick, so most people won't notice. All right, so we're going to take, um, obviously, anytime you have exposed needle, and this needle now has to go back through the skin to come out, you want to make sure that that's really clean when you pull it back through. So the easiest way to do this is to slide one underneath. One the top one. And, whoops, and then we'll lay one on top. You want to do the top one first? Oh, sure, we can do the top one first. And then lay a pad on top. And then he presses down, pulls it out, and we're basically done. A little wipe. Notice no blood. Okay, next one. Another pad underneath. And on top. What you do that? I would put these away. So oh, there started. we go. We got one to bleed a little. So when you do get a bleeder, you just a little compression for about a minute and it it stops pretty quick. So you wonder too. Well, I'm sorry, I it's really hard to see the chat with this tripod the way it's set up. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to show you that in one second here. Yeah, the needles definitely need to be taken care of. You put them back in their little plastic holders when you're done, which are, this is what they look like when they come out of the package and then when you're done. And then we throw these away in a sharps container, which you can buy it pretty much anywhere, including all of your CVSs and Walgreens and everywhere else. So. Walmarts. Walmarts, yeah. So I knew that usually I, if I do like a whole arm, maybe eight to ten, that you'll get one that's a bleeder. And you can see that there's really, you don't see much. You can sort of see the three little dots, but that's really all you end up with. But you've already taken five of them out. Is there a sexual aspect to doing this? Um, well, I, I wouldn't say sexual um, in that this is 
you know, this is not going to make me orgasm, but it is a euphoric high and it does feel good. So in combination with everything else that you, you usually do in a scene, it, uh, it is nice. The clean alcohol pad. Oh, okay. I don't really need it, really. I just want to get this one to stop and it will be fine. Hi there. Oh, Patty. Oh, wait. Okay. Hopefully people don't think you're a junkie <laughs> with those tracks no. on your arm. Um, no, they don't. And most of the time, people don't even notice. Is that where you... Oh, actually, no, we're just doing the arm because it's convenient. I mean, I don't want to get bounced off a of periscope by doing them on my boobs or other locations, so... Um, yeah. Exactly. So you notice he takes all the remaining bits and wraps them in his glove, and then we can just toss this whole thing in the sharps container. Which... Here. Here, he's so picky. This is a sharps container. Excellent. So, one piercing demo. I hope you guys uh, like this. Um, whether or not I need one more glass pad here, just for uh, make sure everything's fine. I guess I need to watch the replay. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I knew that this was going to go quick, um, but I just wanted to make sure that. Um, I was able to answer all the questions at the end. I know Dr. Jana has hers coming up here right after this, so I don't want to hold up other people's scopes. <laughs> Just love you, mistress. Well, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. And hopefully we're going to do more of these. Well, thank you. Everybody have a nice Halloween. This was really fun. You're welcome. Love it. <laughs> I did great. Uh, I think it went better than I thought it was going to go. And that's always a good sign. So maybe next time we'll set me on fire. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to end this now. And if you want to watch this in replay, you can get this on catch.me. And as well as you can always contact me on fetlife.com, uh, Mistress Christmas, capital M, capital X. Is that what you're doing? Mistress Xmas, not Christmas. Oh, well, yeah, Mistress Xmas. I'm sorry. Alrighty. Well, thank you. And have a fun Halloween, people. Needle play. All right. Bye-bye.